The Brave is an inside look at the part of the military that we rarely see. We are a highly clandestine, uh, detailed operative that communicates with the Department of Defense and uh, ground, ground patrols that uh, are, you know, an extremely sophisticated group of individuals who can speak different languages, who can uh, morph into crowds, um, who are tactically savvy, um, who can handle high pressure, uh, very volatile situations. And the five of us, um, that being McGuire, uh, Dalton, Jazz, Amir, and myself, Preach, um, we are kind of like a, a military 21 Jump Street, if you will. We come from different backgrounds, but we all share the, the common mission of, you know, protecting those who, who need to be protected and, and defending freedom. So there are these teams that exist in our military that we rarely hear about. Some people know about, you know, the Navy SEALs. Some may have even heard of the Delta Force. Uh, the closest relatable team that we could be sort of uh, analogized to would be, I guess, like the ISA. Um, we are um, very adept in levels of, of espionage that have to do with code switching, being able to, to change our personas, uh, speak different dialects and languages. Myself, I'm a, um, a CPO in the Navy. I was a Chief Petty Officer First Class. Uh, Navy SEAL, who was recruited um, by uh, Patricia uh, and Haitia's character, uh, alongside with you know McGuire was a was an was an Army Ranger. Uh, these are, are people who have lots of technical and tactical experience. Uh, however, what's really interesting and cool about this show is that we uh, non-expositorily get into the sophisticated levels in which the Army tries to the Army and the military, tries to keep firefights from actually happening. So we delve into all the communication aspects, all the surveillance aspects, um, all of the uh, espionage aspects that go into keeping the world safe, so as to hopefully try to avoid actual combat. I'm Demetrius Gross. I have the pleasure of playing Anthony Preach Carter. Um, his middle name is Ezekiel, and I think in the pilot they they changed it from his his first name being Ezekiel to now his middle name. But the team uh, sort of uh, they sort of jest that I'm the preachy one. Yeah, I'm the one who has uh, always some kind of moral or uh, spiritual uh, sound bite that I'm trying to you know drop on everybody to keep them uh, you know sane in these very volatile, cathartic situations. Uh, preach got his name, I think, because his father um, was like a, like a military vet himself. You know, I had this whole backstory how Preach's dad was in Vietnam. He came home, PTSD, maybe like, like many of our, our, uh, our men and women of the armed forces may have dealt with some coping mechanisms like substance abuse and things of that nature and uh, had him that he, that Preach's dad was like sober for 25 years and then he got ordained as a minister. So perhaps uh, Preach kind of came up in a, you know, in, in, a, in a church or a spiritual environment, uh, seeing his father in the pulpit, uh, while he himself preached wasn't actually a pastor or a bishop or a deacon, he was always around that, that spiritual world. And I think it has helped him to keep uh, his cool in these, in these, you know, high pressure situations. And he, I, I like to think of him as a bit of the voice of reason with a, with a little levity and a little bit of uh, lightheartedness. He's a, um, He's an extremely compassionate guy, so throughout the series you'll see uh, some of the, the dichotomy that, is, that, that my character goes through, where he has to balance his spiritual sort of perspective with the very dangerous and sometimes, uh, you know, bloody uh, situations that the team finds themselves in. How does he balance that with the fact that he's a family man, three kids, and, you know, obviously understands the... Uh, the value and the, the sanctity of life, but sometimes to, to protect the greater good, he has to go in and, and uh, you know, with his team, 
do that unfortunate part of the military that uh, whether or not we want to be comfortable with it or want to be aware of it, you know, we are, we're indebted to them for, for doing that, for protecting that thin red line. The Brave is a global show. It's uh, a global show dealing with uh, worldwide issues that concern all of us all over the planet, no matter, you know, what's our nationality, what flag we're waving. We all care about protecting our families. We all care about uh, having an opportunity to earn a living, uh, to have a safe home, to see our kids grow up, to see them go to school, um, to be able to play in a backyard or something like that, you know, if you're fortunate enough to have a backyard. Uh, so these issues are global issues. Uh, our writers, um, the network executives, you know, all of the, the levels of filtration that these scripts go through, uh, these individuals were, were very, very smart in, in the way that they uh, put our show together so that it's not just America defending itself against this big bad world. We are a, an entity that cares about safety, cares about freedom, uh, cares about, uh, you know, people being able to enjoy a diplomat, a, a, a democratic environment. Our show doesn't stand still. In fact, what I loved about watching this pilot is that if you, you, you you're not allowed to, to sit back in your chair. Once we go in and, and the mission's on and the directors have been given from DIA, it doesn't let off your throat. <laughs> it's like, you in it, right? Um, that is going to translate very well into the series. That kind of pace, that fact, that, that that idea that what was last week's episode, there may be a bit of a, a a dovetail thematically into the next episode, but every episode will stand alone as its its own thing, a new mission. One of the things I really love about this show is how authentic it is. I mean, our audiences that watch television and, and movies are smarter than they've ever been in the history of cinema. I mean, with the advent of YouTube and, and you know, our cell phones, people can find out all the things that used to be movie magic. People can find out everything. So our, 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 our movie tricks have been completely demystified. So. Our writers, our producers, us actors, we're aware of that. So we have to go to a new level of creating uh, authentic stories and, and telling them in a way that, uh, you know, you, you can't see the creases. So what does that mean? We have hired uh, Navy SEAL captains. Uh, we have a guy, Mikel Vega, who's 20 year, 20 year Navy SEAL, uh, who I'm blessed to be able to work with because I actually play a CPO in the Navy. Uh, and and doing intense, uh, very sophisticated uh, drills and, uh, and, and learning uh, how to move silently in, in adverse situations, uh, the sign language that's involved in these missions, uh, the language, the jargon, the shorthand that's used, the code words that are used, uh, the little cues that you know, might slip right by you and you wouldn't know, but you know, a whole conversation was had based, based on a few hand signals or a couple buzzwords, things of that nature. I mean, in fact, we actually did a legit boot camp uh, when we were in Morocco shooting the pilot. And then when we got uh, here to, to get into the series, we did a boot, a boot camp 2.0. And when we got here to the series, we did a boot camp 2.0. Uh, I only mention that because Boot Camp 2.0 made Boot Camp 1 look like it was Boot Camp 0 because 2.0 had jujitsu and, and, and judo and uh, we were out in a, in, a, in a field way out in New Mexico somewhere in a bunker uh, learning how to clear rooms and, and all of that and it was, it, was, it was insane. I mean, I guess because they say in combat. They say 90% of the of the the hand to hand combat stuff ends up on the floor. So fortunately, our Navy SEAL, you know, technical advisor is also like a master black belt jujitsu artist. So he taught us all the fl floor grappling stuff, and you know, and we have a brother here from uh, from Nigeria, a guy named uh, uh, Benga, who's uh, working with us on the Yoruba to keep that authentic. On uh, this particular episode, we're in Lagos, so you know, we can't just do the show and and sort of 
throw a wash at the language. We want to honor the people who, you know, we are, um, we are delving into their culture. We want to honor them. So uh, Dean has got, gotten uh, Banga to come and work with me with my Yoruba and work with uh, some of the other actors that are playing some of the militants. And, uh, you know, that stuff is exciting. That's why you do this, so that you can um, not only take your audience on a ride, but you can go on a ride yourself and, and hopefully, you know, learn something and, and have some fun. People are going to want to watch this show because they've never seen anything like it. And I know that's a bold statement. You, you never see anything like it. This is actually the kind of military show that there may be some entities of the military that don't want you to see this show because we are in an entertaining and engaging way showing you some of the military secrets, some of the ways that situations get diffused and you never know about them. We, are the, we, are, we represent those teams that go in and, and shut it down. And you may have never even heard about it. In fact, nine times out of nine, you won't hear about it. But the brave gets into the nooks and crannies of that. That's what's gonna be interesting. Everybody wants to know a secret. <laughs> They're gonna be touched at, at how we not only show the tactical elements, but we, we show the human side of these men and women who, who put their lives on the line. And uh, hopefully we do it in, in a positive and, uh, and, and, and a respectful way that pays homage to them in the right way.